Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of The Gun Show. I'm Crystal Reese, and I will be your host today. We have our podcast brought to you by Gray Man Solutions. They're a holster company. My favorite holster of theirs is called The Mini. It's a tiny little kydex attachment, and you can clip it on a belly band. My favorite is the thigh wrap, and it seals it in place and has really good trigger protection, which a lot of wraps don't give you that kind of protection. So it's great. Very versatile. Gray Man Solutions. And if you type in Mama Bear at the the purchase, you get a discount. So heck yeah. Go check them out. This week, we are just going to cover what I think everyone's thinking about today, which is the election. And I really want to break down Joe Biden's gun policy. We've done this before, but it was before it was written out on his website. Now it's written out on his website. And we're going to break down what would happen if Joe Biden became president and what would happen if Trump became president for our gun laws, Second Amendment. So I'm going to share screen for those of you that are watching on on the YouTube. Okay, so his plan, and I'm basically going to read, pick out parts of this, but it says, the Biden plan to end our gun violence epidemic. Dun, dun, dun. So it is a fact, 40,000 people do die a year, around 39,000, uh, from firearms deaths. That includes violence on each other. That includes suicide deaths. Suicide deaths are more than over half of the firearms deaths. And that also includes police to, um, to criminal deaths. So, I mean, that number is kind of skewed a little bit. And in retrospect, if you consider the amount of lives saved from the CDC report, on the low end, you're looking at 300,000. On the high end, 3 million. So over 10 times to 100 times greater of the lives saved from firearms versus um, destroyed. But anywho, we'll continue. I mean, I can really, it's, it's going to be hard for me to bite my tongue because you consider the amount of deaths from, you know, this little COVID and we've already exceeded that. But here we are calling this an epidemic when, yeah, I mean, I guess COVID's a pandemic. Okay. What, um, he's taken on the NRA a couple times. They're sharing his victories. Um, a couple laws he's passed successfully. One was making you do a background check, which I think is fine. Personally, I'm not opposed to some gun laws, but ultimately I do agree that we, we would be fine without any. <laughs> Let's bring back the machine guns. Okay, Joe Biden, this is what made me nervous. Joe Biden also knows how to make progress on reducing gun violence using executive action. And you'll see that repeated multiple times in this. And that's what makes me the most nervous if Joe Biden wins this presidency for our gun rights. Okay, so first thing, he wants to hold gun manufacturers accountable by removing the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act. What this does is if someone, if you make guns. So say I'm company A and I make the A gun and someone, and I sell it to someone, someone takes the A gun and does something bad with the A gun. I cannot be sued for that person's actions. It's not my fault that they're a psycho, right? And that's what the Lawful Commerce and Arms Act does. It prevents me from getting sued for other people using my product poorly or in a bad manner. Well, he wants to lift that. So then the victim who got shot by a crazy person using my created gun, my product, that victim can sue me for making the A gun that the bad guy used against them. So 
that's kind of crazy. I am no longer, I'm held accountable for other people's actions, not my own. Like I didn't choose to shoot someone, but I could get in trouble for that. So that's what that is. Get weapons of war off our streets. He really wants to reduce the high capacity magazines. Um, who declares high capacity? I think they're using California as a standard here. So I would assume it'd be less than 10, 10 rounds. But then look at this. The next one also made me nervous. Ban the manufacture and sale of assault weapons and high capacity magazines. This is what he's using to defend his point. So federal law prevents hunters from hunting migratory game birds with more than three shells in their shotgun. And then he goes on and says, that means our law protects ducks more than children. Well, yeah, I mean, in that case, we are hunting and we're using that gun in a hunting way. And it's not for our personal protection. The ducks aren't attacking us. <laughs> Whereas in normal self-defense, it'd be like the ducks have guns too and they're attacking us. But anywho, so that is currently what he's using definitely wants to limit capacity at the bottom of this it says biden will also use his executive authority to ban the importation of assault weapons so there you go he's also saying he's going to use his executive authority to do some that's a massive massive amount of firearms that would become illegal Regulate possession of existing assault weapons under the National Firearms Act. Unfortunately, this whole part with Biden is going to be negative, but I really, I wanted to refresh myself on his policy just in case. I'm hoping that he doesn't become the president, but just in case I want to refresh myself on this and I feel like it's important for you. Okay, regulate possession of existing assault weapons under the National Firearms Act. Currently, the National Firearms Act requires individuals possessing machine guns, silencers, short barreled rifles. So they want to add what they call uh, assault weapons under that ban, that mass ban, which most Americans with firearms have this type of gun that they don't like. So that would be making everyone felons. A buyback the assault weapons and high capacity. So, the, and you know, with the buybacks, they're using your own money to give you, to pay for a fraction of what you paid for, for the, yeah, it's just a twisted way. I mean, you paid like what, $800 and they'll give you a $200 gift card that you paid for with your taxes. So really, uh, they're not giving you anything, but in here, there's that, a buyback. Reduce stockpiling of weapons. And you remember, if anyone watches any <laughs> sort of humor, we in the gun world find this humorous, but there's several memes that make fun of what they consider stock a stockpile. And it's usually four, five, six guns. And they say that's a stockpile. And so there you go. Also kind of limiting how many guns you can purchase a month. Also like California. Keep guns out of dangerous hands. We already do this. Federal background checks. And there is no such thing as a freaking gun show loophole. This is just nice words for people. Require background checks for all gun sales. They're saying that guns are sold without background checks. I will say you can do a private sale without a background check in utah at least and even in kansas california you technically can't but you have to register it whether that happens or not and that's the thing this is in california and there's a lot of okay that's the laws but whatever like a lot of people ignore them so anywho making you do background checks for everything close other loopholes in addition to closing the boyfriend loophole highlighted below, Biden will reinstate the Obama-Biden policy to keep guns out of the hands of certain people. 
unable to manage their fail affairs for mental health. Okay, so there is already, if you're deemed mentally incompetent, you can't purchase a firearm. So I'm not sure why he's saying that. One of the first actions Trump took was to reverse this rule to, okay, if someone gets social security, they cannot, they could not have a gun. Well, Trump said, if you have social security, you can still own a gun. Close the hate crime loophole. <laughs> I'm like, I've never even heard of these loopholes. Okay. <laughs> Biden will enact legislation, legislation prohibiting an individual who has been convicted of a misdemeanor hate crime or received an enhanced sentence for a misdemeanor because of hate bias from purchasing a firearm. Problem is, who decides it's a hate crime? And are we going to start going into Facebook and saying that if you support Trump, you're white supremacist, and now you, just by saying I support Trump, are posting a hate crime. Does that make sense? Like, that is a slippery slope. You can't, you just can't do that based off of someone's wording or whatever. Like, yeah, if they have a crime, then it's a crime, but I don't know. It's a little loose. Close the Charleston loophole. Uh, it allows people to complete a firearms purchase if their background check is not completed within three business days. So if they take too long to, if the, if the state takes too long to process the background check, then it's an automatic pass. Well, they want to change that to where you don't get the automatic pass, which California has that. And people have been waiting for their guns for a long time. So I definitely think we need to make sure that that is, stays in place or else that's another way of limiting our ability to access firearms. Oh, sorry. We're just so backed up on background checks. You can't get your gun for two years. It's been nine months for people to get their concealed carry approved. I mean, I don't think two years is exaggerating, guys. Like, it may sound like it, but, and that's, he says, this is a thing he will do within the first 100 days as being president. A report detailing the cases in which background checks are not completed within 10 days and steps. Okay, close the fugitive uh, from justice loophole. Because of actions by the Trump record, records of almost 500,000 fugitives from justice who are prohibited from purchasing firearms were deleted from the background check system. The Biden administration will reinstore that or restore that. So if you're a fugitive, then you cannot purchase a firearm. I didn't know Trump opened these up. I thought Trump was really bad for firearms, but I guess he, he's done quite a bit of things in favor of firearms in the Second Amendment. And the online sale, this one's the worst, guys. This is, this is where it hurts. And the online sale of firearms and ammunitions. Uh, to prohibit all online sales of firearms, ammunition, kits, and gun parts. That would be really, really horrendous because that competition is what keeps prices within reach of middle-class Americans. And if you remove the access, then the prices go up and it just, or even access to wherever you are, how are you going to get to it? Man, that's, that's horrendous. But it's doable. A lot of these are doable. I lived in California. I survived. I was a gun person. I'm a concealed carry instructor. Like you can make it work, but I will tell you when I left California, both my husband and I, as soon as we drove across the line, the state line, we both just like felt this huge weight off of our chest. And it really was from the gun loss. <laughs> it, that really was the only, well, other than their other crazy stuff, but the main part of our stress and the weight we felt and the oppression was their their anti-rights over there 
create an effective program to ensure individuals who become prohibited from possessing firearms relinquish their weapons. So right now, there are kind of ways you have uh, what are probation officers that go in and they'll do a check before someone comes into a home to make sure there's no guns, but there's not like a lot of ways to make sure that they don't have guns on them. He gives an example of apparently his favorite state, California, has a mandatory process for ensuring relinquishing by any individual newly subject to a domestic violent restraining order. And they go in there and actually take, take the gun. Incentivize state extreme risk laws, also called red flag laws. Enable family members or law enforcement officials to temporarily remove an individual's access to firearms when that individual is in a crisis or danger of themselves. This is another slippery slope law because it's an opinion. Your neighbor, you get in an altercation with them and they're like, oh, well, I know they have guns. I'm just not feeling comfortable because they yelled at me and they own guns, right? Like that's when it's a he said she said situation little salem witch trials going on where people are taking away your rights because of verbal disagreements and and they know that you have them so definitely do not like red flag laws which trump is pretty pro red flag laws he's actually helped some of them move along give state incentives to set up a gun licensing program or gun licensing programs, Biden will enact legislation, legislation, I'm having a hard time with that word today, to give states and local governments grants to require individuals to obtain a license prior to purchasing a gun. This is another thing California does. They have the firearm safety certificate. You have to study. Uh, it's like a driver's ed pamphlet before you can purchase a gun. The problem with this is firearms, owning a firearm is a right. It is not a privilege. It is a right. Driving a car is a privilege. Owning a gun is a right. So forcing people to do steps before they can acquire a gun, uh, it, it's all an infringement on their right as an American, as a human being to be able to protect themselves. Adequately fund the background check system. Okay, sure. Expand incentives for states to submit records of prohibited persons. That's keeping an eye on people. Addressing the deadly combination of guns and domestic violence. So this is when we get into some funky statistics because they say here that you're, you're more likely to be killed in a domestic violence situation, killed, if there is a gun in the home. But it does not say that you're more likely to be killed with a gun. It just says you're going to be killed. So some of these things are misleading. 86% of children killed in shootings with four or more victims were involved in domestic or family violence, which would make sense. If someone's being killed in their home, they have a history of domestic or fa family violence. He recognizes that the gun violence and domestic violence epidemics are linked and cannot be solved in isolation. So he's interconnecting them with firearms and saying that that's the way to remove them. Um, he's giving up some more. Leader McConnell refuses to sign these things. Biden will enact legislation to close. This is when we're talking about the boyfriend loophole that I'd really never heard of. We're stalking loophole by prohibiting all individuals convicted of assault, battery, or stalking from purchasing or possessing firearms, regardless of their connections to the victim. I am aware that if you have any sort of domestic violence, you cannot purchase a firearm. So, or that was my belief system. Maybe I'm wrong. Write on the comments if if I'm wrong throughout any of the things. Share. I'll, there's plenty of laws that I can learn. 
This proposal is modeled after California, Connecticut, all these different places. Uh, temporarily restraining order from purchasing or possessing a firearm before their hearing. So the thing is, is we have these temporary laws that go in place and they're not updated with the state or whatever and they still get a gun <laughs> or their buddy who had a gun gives it to them. So I mean, it really hasn't changed. These laws don't really change much, but I mean, I guess I don't, I don't mind someone who has a domestic violence situation, the, the bad guy not being able to get a gun. Establish a new task force on online harassment and abuse to focus on connections between mass shootings, online harassment, extremism. Okay, they're just talking about how they're gonna create something, expand the use of evidence based lethality assessments by law enforcement in cases of domestic violence. Just further understand that. You know, domestic violence is a freaking problem, so I'm okay with understanding that more and taking that more seriously. I obviously don't think people should die. <laughs> we own guns because we love, not because we hate right? Like we love the people that we have. And I don't think people who have a history of hatred and violence should, um, should own a gun. Make sure firearm owners take on the responsibility of ensuring their weapons are used safely. Put America on the path to ensure that 100% of firearms sold in America are smart guns. This is horrendous. Oh my gosh, no. This is basically making sure they can keep tabs on your gun. Nope, 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 nope. That is not good. They already keep tabs on us with our phones. I don't want them keeping tabs on my gun and putting any sort of chip or anything into it. Hold adults accountable for giving minors access to firearms. I agree with that. The thing is, is you have to, you have to be able to define something. Like, what is that? If you had a lock and the kid broke through the lock, then are you still gonna be held accountable? Because once, you're already dealing with the horrendous consequences of your kid killing themselves or whatever it is. But now you're going to take, you're going to get a charge on top of that for your kid killing themselves. You know, like it's just, like I said, there, there has to be really clear lines, but I do believe that all gun owners should be responsible with our firearms. It doesn't matter if you are military or law enforcement or you educate your children, like you need to do more work than just telling them, don't touch that gun on the table. Require gun owners to safely store their weapons. Kind of going on that, I'm, I'm for that. Now, are they going to require me to purchase a huge safe and then I have to register it and then register all the guns to that safe and whatnot. Like I said, that's when now you're, you're busting the, the capacity for people to purchase guns because then one, you have to pay for the test to purchase the gun. Then you take you take the test and then you buy the gun, then you have to buy this safe and then you have to buy all these things, this fancy safe with this whatever. Like it's all making, pushing the threshold of the cost up higher and higher and it makes it more difficult for us, for us to get into firearms if you're not upper middle class. Empower law enforcement to effectively enforce our gun laws. Prioritize prosecution of straw purchases. These are already illegal. Notify law enforcement when a potential firearm purchaser fails a background check. That's interesting. Require firearms owner to report if their weapon is lost or stolen. These are already things that are in place. Stop ghost guns. Nope. 
Nope. I don't want the government that they're trying. I can kind of see a trend here. They're trying to keep track of every single firearm because if you can't remove inventory, if you don't know how much inventory you have, right? So they need to know that there's this exact, oh, sorry, this exact number of guns so that we can remove it. Reform, fund, and empower the U.S. Justice Department to enforce our gun laws. Okay. Biden will direct his attorney general to deliver to him within the first 100 days recommendations for restructuring the ATF. ATF, I am very recently learning, is a terrorist organization, just kidding, <laughs> but is horrendous. They can just decide no voting, no nothing, that something is a felony. Owning a firearm of certain type is a felony. That's horrendous. And apparently they've clicked onto this. Direct the ATF to issue an annual report on firearms trafficking. Okay, tackle urban gun violence with targeted evidence-based community interventions. Okay, there is a lot of gun violence. The problem is they need to study, which I mean, I guess that's what they're trying to do, they're study. They need to study how they're acquiring those guns and most of them are illegally so, and they're performing, they're doing illegal actions by killing people. So what makes you think if they don't respect life, why would they respect a law that someone wrote in whatever like that's just they clearly don't ex they don't respect the consequences of killing someone they they're not going to respect the consequences of breaking a law by getting a gun from their sister or getting a gun from the black market or whatever dedicate the brightest scientific minds to solving the gun violence public health epidemic sure study it they, they studied that in the CDC. They didn't publish their study results. So interesting. Well, they did. They didn't publicize it. Prohibit the use of federal funds to arm or train educators to discharge firearms. We should be passing rational gun laws not requiring educators who already have too much on their plates to also protect the safety. Biden supports Barring states from using federal dollars to arm or train educators. What the? So he wants to remove the initiative to help educate teachers in self defense. <gasps> That's horrendous. That's stupid. If they want to educate themselves, let them educate themselves. Why would you not support that? <sighs> Um, address the epidemic of suicides by firearms. This one is bad. Six in 10 gun related deaths are from suicides. So, like I said, it was over half. So, 60% are suicides. Definitely need to figure out how to stop that. The hard thing is. It's just a diff it's a complex problem and it's not just in America. People commit suicide in other countries too. I believe it was Chinese women or Japanese women have the highest suicide rate. And yeah, it's suicide sad. Supporting survivors of violence in their communities. Noticeable mental health make trauma programs. I don't know what this has to do. I mean, I guess if you deal with violence, create a network of trauma care centers for people who have gone through violence. I'm all for this. Train healthcare and other service providers in trauma-centered care. Okay. So that is, woo. I guess this is not very short because that is the Biden gun policy. That is what he wants to put in place. We will see what happens. If Trump wins, Trump has already, he doesn't have a written out plan like Biden does, but from what he has said and his rallies, He's had the McCloskeys on, and they have, I think that's their name, the St. Louis couple, 
and they have talked about how they're pro second amendment and trump has also said how he is for the nra and for the right to protect ourselves and so forth and i don't think he's going to mess with the second amendment too much however in his presidency he made bump stocks illegal and there's not a lot of research behind bump stocks being very lethal or killing people in mass whatever like there's not a lot of logic behind making bump stocks illegal and he did so there you go i know lots of people i'm not going to list names that are felons now because they own a bump stock so i don't know he he did something against guns too clearly not as bad as biden moral of the story we will be okay even if biden comes in the office we will will survive and hopefully we can band together if there is something really crazy so stay sane stay safe and we will see you next week like comment subscribe do all the crazy bits share this goodness and we will talk to you next time